So Pokemon Tournament, this game when first announced filled me with so much hype I can't remember the last time I was so looking forward to a game. Because of course, like most people, I love the Pokemon games but not only that but fighting types are my favourite type. Add in the Tekken guy cause hey I also enjoyed Tekken and this is potentially everything I ever wanted. I pictured an amazing fighting game with a large cast of fighting type Pokemon with some others of comparable size likely and somewhat humanoid who aren't fighting types in an amazing and well balanced game I'd play for years. Nope. After the initial reveal showing off Machamp and Lucario, only one more fighting type got added. Fighting type Pokemon in a Pokemon fighting game? Hahaha, <laughs> no. Bring out the usual suspects. Time went on, fire types and numbered fighting types, hype died, interest faded and I ended up not even pre-ordering Poké in the end. Anyway, enough of my shattered dreams as I clearly ended up getting it in the end, so let's talk about the actual game. So, where to start? Pokémon initially got an arcade release in Japan and it wasn't overly popular and met with many complaints or so I heard. No boss character and very few playable Pokémon were the key ones and both are very understandable but the Wii U version has addressed the issues somewhat. With the Wii U version it has brought up to 60 players to choose from including Shadow Mewtwo who is the boss type character who was added or patched into the arcade version as well as some others but three of the characters are apparently Wii U exclusives. These are Brixen, or however it's pronounced, Garchomp and Normal Mewtwo, so in 16 characters you get 2 Mewtwo's and 2 Pikachu's, so yeah, it's not got the best variety. So gameplay. I won't get into the control like I normally do, but first off, Pokemon's established weakness and resistances aren't applicable. So Sceptile doesn't take more damage from fire attacks and Machamp can punch Gengar right in his face. This was obviously done for balance, what I will get back to, and because it probably wouldn't work especially well in a fighting game since, like with the Machamp example, he only has one attack that Gengar wouldn't be immune to so it wouldn't be much of a match. Pokin does however add its own weakness triangle. Against normal attacks you can use a counter ability that makes you glow glue, take no damage while you hold it until you lash out with a counter strike. To get around counter you go with grab but makes you glow green and best the counter and finally if you think your opponent is going for a throw you need to try punching through it and if you time it well you will glow red, break their grab and land your combo. And for anyone who didn't realise and wondering why I'm making mention of the glowing colours it's because it represents the starter Pokemon's water grass fire balance what I felt was a nice touch. The fights themselves switch between two phases. The first is the field phase, what is a 3D style battle, where you freely move around the battlefield and if you land certain moves or combos, you will knock your opponent into dual phase, what is a 2D style battle, what ends when you hit the opponent hard enough. You may be thinking, what's the point of that? And yeah, I have no idea really. You have different moves based on what phase you're in, so for me it just seems like they wanted to add extra moves and didn't want to add commands more complicated than holding a direction and pressing A. Well I say that but it does work and it works well and is even fun making the game quite enjoyable for the most part but for me at least it has a huge glaring issue that is shared with the last game I reviewed and that is it's not balanced at all. I don't know, maybe I would just come off as a bit better as I seem to have picked the weakest character in the game overall. Though the wording of that is a bit off so let me explain. In game characters are split into four categories, power, speed, technical and standard. What this doesn't include is that some characters are ranged characters. I selected Machamp as you can see from the video who falls under the power category. So Machamp is tied to the most health and if we can get a hold of them he can really do some damage. Think of him like Zangief, just with submission instead of the spinning pile drive. Anyway, my champ only has one truly ranged attack. One of the other Pokemon has a grab with about as much range as Machamp's attack with the second most range. And as soon as anybody realises this, they will force you into dual mode even if they need to take a hit to do so and will just pin you down with ranged attacks that either explode making them impossible to jump or they will just have another anti-air projectile to deal with you anyway. On the other hand you have speed characters who are, as you would guess, are weak but fast. But they are so fast you can throw a punch with Machamp and they can run up a little and attack and still hit before Machamp. So of course a few Pokemon have great ranged attacks and really fast closed up attacks who are a joy to face off against. As I said I may just be better as I haven't played other characters enough to give clear examples. But to me it feels like they didn't even try to balance it. Why? 
Pikachu. Pikachu is the mascot of Pokemon, but other than that, he's nothing special. So for him to be as strong as he ended up, it just seems purposeful because he's a damn mascot. The balance doesn't really matter too much if you are the weird demographic who actually plays your game's logo co-op for fun. But as this game was meant to be a competitive versus game, as shown by there initially being no boss and no story, just versus, and the mode just being co-op versus, online versus, versus CPU, and the Ferrum League is just another CPU versus. But but it is also the story mode, it's clearly meant to be a somewhat competitive game, so it being unbalanced is quite an issue. I mentioned it there, but the game's main solo mode is the Ferrum League, where you take on five back-to-back -back matches versus the computer, and you move up the ranks based on how you did. Once you get between rank 1 and rank 8, you can take part in the rank tournament to become the league champ and finally take on the league leader to promote to the next rank. In between this, there's a small story about Mewtwo, but it really doesn't add too much. There is a bunch more I could go on about, like leveling stats, trainer customizations, and I never even mentioned the sport Pokemon who add to the battles, but I feel this is getting on a bit, so let's cut to the chase. Is this game any good? Yes. It's actually really fun. If in future they manage to balance it through patches, it could be great, but still. It's not the most competitive fighting game, so it's not a must grab for fighting game fans. And for fun party play, it can't really compete with Smash Brothers, what has up just under one third as many Pokemon as Pokemon Tournament anyway. So score wise, I have to give Pokemon about a 6 out of 10. It's quite fun as a Pokemon spin off, but once again, it's a game you should probably wait until the price cut, but then again, it's not a game people will play for ages, so if you wait too long, online will be dead, so choices. So yeah, that's the review. Hopefully, the sound quality will be a bit better this time and not just a quiet moan you can barely hear. Anyway, if you did watch all this and what well, is unlikely, <laughs> then thanks for watching.